Hey guys, what's going on? It's Rob with Signway Specialty. It has been forever. It has been seven months since we have done a video. And yeah, I mean, things just get busy, yo. Can't do everything real, real easily. But we're getting to the end of school. We are done December 10th. That is a graduation day. And then I gotta go out and, you know, adult my life. Well, at the moment, I figured we can come up with a video since we've had a sufficient amount of time to do so. And today's is going to be about an air compressor. A guy had come up to me, and then another guy, and then another guy, and then another shop, all asking about, well, how do you know how big of an air compressor to get? Well, that is based on your air supply requirements, what you want it to be. In this particular case, the guy had specifically wanted 130 PSI to be maintained at all times. So... Even if you were to break the line at the other end, which in his case was an air spray gun, if he were to use that for 20 minutes, he never wants to go below 130 PSI. So he bought a scroll compressor from Snap-on, and he's wondering why it still goes down to 105 and hovers there. Currently what he's using has 28 CFM is his requirement, and what I calculated from my math was he needs... 29.711 CFM. So as you can see, those numbers are not the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to calculate what you need based on what you have and then what air compressor to buy. So first things first, let's figure out, let's say we have a shop, it just got a new air system put in, the only thing that uses air is this quarter inch little spray gun. Quarter inch being a Schedule 40 pipe, like you would buy from the store, like a water pipe, that has an, a quarter inch opening, or it's, red, it's made as a quarter inch diameter, which inherently the inside is going to have a little bit smaller of a diameter because you have wall thickness. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the things on here. We're going to stick with the 130 PSI idea. So the compressor pressure, we want to maintain 130 PSI. For the nozzle pressure, we want zero. It's going to be wide open. Now, pressure in this math has to be in pounds per square foot. So what you do is you would multiply this times 144, because 12 inch by 12 inch is a square foot, is 144 square inches. So 144 times that, and what you get is 18,720 PSF. Zero times 144 is just zero PSF. What this is is pressure one, pressure two, this is A1, this is A2. These are areas. So, compressor line flow area. Let's say you got the air compressor. Coming out of the air compressor is a half inch Schedule 40 line. But in your shop, you have a dryer or oil catch or whatever, which is in line with it. Whatever this is, whatever it is going from unit to unit, like over here is the end of that spray gun, that's where you measure. If this has a one inch line coming out of the compressor and a half inch coming out of the dryer, you'll go with the half inch because you want the smaller one. It's not going to flow as much because the pipe is smaller than the one inch. This is a bottleneck. So we will go with this right here. We will say that after everything in the air system is put together, we need to result in this. So right here is going to be our pressure one. We want this to never be below this. And then on the out, outer edge, you know, you got your spray gun, water, or whatever's coming out of here. This is quarter inch schedule 40. What you need to do is you need to go in and you need to look on a chart, schedule 40, quarter inch. That's how you figure out what your areas need to be. So, what we will have is quarter inch. We'll go over here to the flow area. We have 000723. That's how we get our feet squared flow area. So, 0 0.000723 feet squared. Now, the compressor line we said was what? We'll just say it was half inch coming out of there which is the one after the dryer which the half inch flow area at the compressor will be 0 
zero, zero, two, one feet squared. That's your area. Now we have air density. We have a certain amount of air that can come out of an area in a given amount of time at a temperature. We're going to say 80 degrees. Now, in order to get that number, we also have yet another chart. Density at 80 degrees is right there. 2.28 times 10 to the negative third. That's at 80 degrees. 0 0.00228 is the density. Now, when we pick this, there are other factors too that you could take into consideration. If you are significantly outside of this area, there is also altitude measurements, which in this case, from US units, you would use all of these at this altitude. And then you would use all of these for this density. And that's how you would do it for different altitudes. But for the sake of ease of use, we're going to stick with just this right here. So now we know we need to supply 130 PSI at all times to our nozzle, no matter what. How big should the air compressor be to supply at 80 degrees Fahrenheit? I need 130 PSI constantly at a wide open quarter inch pipe. Well, that's where we start the math. And that's where this comes from. This is derived from Bernoulli's equation. We just start filling it in. PSF, so 18, 720 minus zero equals the density we found, 0 0.00228 over two V squared one. This is the velocity of the air at the compressor. The pipe, like when we sat there and we made that pipe, that is the velocity of the air coming out right here after the dryer. Why do we need to know that? Because Q, which is our CFM, is equal to 60 times velocity times area. We don't know this, but we do know the area because it's the half inch pipe. We know 60 because it's 60 seconds. This is all in feet per second. So we had to multiply by 60 to get CF minutes, cubic feet per minute, not cubic feet per second, which is what we're going to find. And what that will do is it will give us our flow required to maintain those parameters, the 130 at the half inch line coming out of a quarter inch wide open. So right now we got our pressures, we got our density at 80 degrees divided by two, always divide by two. Now we need our two areas squared. Area one is gonna be our compressor, which is 0 0.0021 squared. Then we get area two, which is our nozzle, 0 0.000723 squared minus one. Now we just do the math. And what we come out to is this minus zero is just that. The 228 divided by two is gonna be 0 0.00114. V squared one does not change because we still don't know the velocity of the compressor. This one is going to be 0 0.00004445. And this one, 0 0.00000523, all minus 1. And I'm going to compress this math down. I'm going to do all of this in one shot right here, which is going to be 7.517. Leave that in parentheses. Our V square, once again, didn't change. 0 0.00114. Eighteen seven twenty. Now we need to get both of these on this side so it's V squared by itself. So eighteen seven twenty divided by the seven point five one seven is going to be twenty four ninety point three five five. And then on the other side, once again, we have zero point zero zero one one four V squared one. Now we need to move this over and divide by it. So the 2490 divided by that is going to give us 
v squared 1. Now to get this not squared, so it's just v1, we have to take the root of the other side. So the square root of 1, 7, 7, 8, 8, 2, 5 equals velocity. Whatever this root is, is the feet per second that needs to be coming out right after our dryer. Minimum to maintain the 130. So it's got to be the number or greater. So V1 equals 1333.726 feet per second is the speed. But now we need CFM. Remember when we come up here, we know the area at the compressor which is the 0021 so we got the 60 seconds to convert we got the area which is 0021 now the velocity 1333.726 feet per second now when we multiply all those together we get CFM equals 1685 and that is the required CFM from the compressor. Ooh, shoot, I didn't have it in frame, did I? That is the required CFM from the compressor that you always have to have. Always. Once you have that, you're all set. Now, if you have multiple items, what you would do is you would do all this math and you get the CFM. This is for the quarter inch. Now what I'll do, let's say if we have another spray gun that's another quarter inch, we don't do add them together and then just say it's half inch. We do the quarter inch and then we would double this so that would be 336 something, 337 CFM. Now if there's another one that's an eighth inch line you would do that inside diameter, do all this math using the same compressor A1 and then you would add it to that 337 that you just got. And you would keep doing that until your entire shop has been figured out. Now let's say this is only running, I don't know, half the time what we would do is do a duty cycle calculation we would do half of the CFM if it's at 50%, 50 percent, 50 percent is half the time so if we come in here we do 168.85 times 0.5 that's the CFM required to run it half the time and maintain that pressure so, yeah, and that's essentially how you pick your air compressor. This is the math you need to do to figure out what each item does. Now, this item flow area, this nozzle flow area, if you got one of those high velocity guns that's got the tube coming off the tip of it, and it's got the holes drilled through, you need to do it at the beginning of the tip, not at the very end, because the end of it's going to be like a half inch tube, but the air gun's only pushing out an eighth inch opening inside that tube. You need to do it at the smallest point in that air gun. So if the gun has a big ass tube up here, you need to take the measurement here because this is going to be where the small part is. You unscrew that tip or make an assessment, say it's two millimeters, and then you would do the math. If you're doing metric, we'll do a video on that. If somebody in the comments says, hey, I want to see the metric version of it, then yeah, then I'll do it. But as it sits right now, this should be pretty self-explanatory as far as each item in the list. And other than that, that's all for today's video. I will post another one very, very soon. I'm getting back into it. And thanks for watching, guys.